So hi, my name's Julie Moore. Um, I've been working for the Foundation for Youth Development for 12 years now, um, and I currently manage their research and evaluation. Um, I have two part-timers who also work with me on um, evaluating our programs. We are a charity, it's a non-profit, and we have altogether now five programs um, that we're currently doing research and evaluation um, on at various stages of either being established or being developed. When I started with the foundation uh, back in 2003, I was actually at the University of Auckland and I was tutoring at the University of Auckland. I was between postgraduate degrees and trying to find some direction and where to move forward. And I was offered this position part time um, and all I knew was they, that they wanted to get a vigorous evaluation of Project K. And Project K was the only program they had at the time, so I actually started work with Project K. Um, and working with, so I had sort of already had this one foot in the university um, and one foot now working for, for the first time for a non-profit organisation. And really the challenge for me was not so much developing the evaluation, but just trying to merge those two work, worlds because my whole background in research had been on the academic side. And here I was with a non-profit and, you know, really there are, there's very little resources to work with, just knowing that the founders were committed to research and development to prove in their outcomes, but also to help develop their programs so that they are working uh, with best practice throughout. Um, so that was, that was my challenge um, originally, how to blend the two. Um, and when I was asked to give this talk today and I was thinking about what I should talk about, I really wanted to talk about how we've developed that, how we've merged the two, because I do a lot of projects still continue working with the university. So from that original time of having a foot in each camp, I've tried to keep that going, keep the relationships going and keep our research at that level. I really wanted to do peer reviewed research projects as well as internal projects. So kind of merged the both. And that's what I've um, done over the 12 years. And what I thought were three insights that uh, actually came when reflecting for this, this talk was that what we've actually done over the years is, you know, you go in and you're thinking, OK, I need, I need, I need a good gold standard research. I need to prove outcomes on this programme. But what actually really comes down to is that we do as much research as we can, answer as many questions as we can, and slowly build the evidence for our programs. So it's a slow build, and it comes from all different directions, but it helps us to understand what our programs are really all about, as well as proving our outcomes. Um, and what we've also done during this journey is, what I've known is, noticed is our, our whole change in our organisation. So we're really more now about inquiry and learning. So at one time it used to be, you know, your, your research and evaluation. So have you proved our outcomes? What, what can you show us? What evidence can, evidence can you give us? Whereas what's really rewarding is now I get people coming and saying, we want to move in this direction. So what have you got? What evidence have you got? What can you tell us? What does the research say? Which shows me that they've become much more committed to this whole idea of inquiry. Um, and one of the key things that we've built this whole thing on are these research partnerships that I brought with me from the university, but have also slowly nurtured and developed over the years. It started with Project K, in fact. Um, what happened was um, I did, for Project K, the evaluation was part of my master's research. So I did all the, the developing the measures and the psychometric testing, collecting the measures. Um, and then we found that all of a sudden we had this vast database of information, way too much. And I thought, this is not something I can do on my own. How am I going to develop research and evaluation when we have so few resources? You know, there's not a big, there's no budget um, when you're working for a nonprofit. Um, and a PhD student from Canada came to see me and said she had an interest in this whole area of positive youth development. All our programs are based on positive youth development. Um, and I said, well, I have this vast database, so how are we going to come together? So for her PhD, that's what she did. And, and it was fantastic because they have this whole skill set that we, we don't have. They have statisticians on hand. They have resources of hand. They have the time to sit and explore the theory and the background and to produce some wonderful research for us. And she's gone on to publish on Project K. Um, and we have... We have the data, we have the data, we have a need for external research and evaluation as well as internal. You know, internal re evaluation is great. It tells us a lot about our program. But when you've got an external evaluation, uh, uh, evaluator or researcher, then you also have that 
um, this idea that it's more objective um, and they, they can bring the resources. Um, and I've just, I noticed by experience myself when presenting to an audience that they are far more receptive when it's our, our findings and outcomes are presented by an external than an internal mm -hmm. evaluation team. So I was keen to keep that level of research going. And we found it just, it, it worked. What I really want to do is pick on another one of our programs to explain some of this journey for us. So this was STAR. So when I started about six months after I started um, and I was, we were working on Project K and it was really underway, someone sort of slapped this on my desk and said, oh, we've got this one too. It's, um, it's a new program and it's a transition program. So this was about helping young students who transition from junior school into secondary school, from primary into secondary just helping them settle into school, and it's done by taking them out on a, a, um, like a camp, a, a week-long camp, um, and then senior students, peer mentors, mentor the younger students. So I realized that I just couldn't apply what I'd learned in Project K to this program, because it was a whole school, so Project K was a randomized control trial, and that wasn't gonna work when you had a whole year nine cohort taking part in, um, in the program. So I tried a few measures, some of them uh, qualitative, quantitative measures, I realized they just didn't work very well. These were young people, a lot going on in their lives. Without a comparison group, it was hard to prove anything. But what we did do was quite simply ask them, so what has the program done for you? Do you enjoy the program? What's the biggest problem about the program? What are the biggest challenges? And I found this whole wealth of information coming from the year nines and from the peer mentors and realized it didn't always have to be a randomized control trial. It didn't <coughs> always have to be quantitative. You could get some real good exact, um, evaluation by mixing the two. Um, and with the qualitative, I actually, have to, I, took, I got this information from actually hundreds of young people over several years and developed from that some quantitative measure, uh, measures. So I did in fact have a vast database again of information um, on, on stars, it was, and, and we'd done some, we did some analysis, but I knew that we had a bit of a treasure here, and, and I wanted it to be researched further. Luckily for me again, along came another student who was um, looking, she was actually a teacher, a primary school teacher. She had an interest in mentoring, and she was just looking for a project. She didn't have time to collect data, and I said, look, we have a whole lot of data here. And over the years, working with more and more students, we actually had a process that we were able to follow that smoothed the way for her to conduct the research. And I think this is what's really important and key to these relationships. All our data, we, we, when we collected it, because of my university background, I used the human participants ethics guidelines for collecting the data. We made sure we protected the young person's privacy, informed consent, we followed all those processes. So that had been followed in this data we were able to hand over to the student. We were very careful to get to sign confidentially, our confidentiality agreements, um, but also um, obviously police checks because they work, have this data from these young people and, and, and could well work alongside them. But what we have done over the years is we've developed also a memorandum of understanding so that from the start we will really understand clearly what this research is about. You can't just go into the universities and say, I want you to develop a research project to prove my outcomes. It, you know, it really doesn't work that way. There has to be something in this for both parties. And we understand that when we're working with students. And generally, the conversation goes something like, I have an interest in this. Do you have something for me? Um, and this is what I'd like to study. Is there some question I can ask for you? Is there something else I can do for you? It really becomes this collaboration. You have to work alongside each other. So th I think um, there are two clear, clear, clear causes in the memorandum of understanding that we have that are important to how we work together and one is that we work in a collaborative manner to allow each party to achieve their objectives and the second one is that we agree to be open direct and honest to maintain the integrity of the research so we can each have our say we can each have our comment but that we um, we work together to make sure that the research above all is honest so you know, I've learned that from every piece of research, you're going to get positive findings, you're going to get what you know, you're going to get the evidence, but you're also going to learn things that were unexpected, and you're also going to learn things that you need to take on board to develop the program further. And we have a process whereby we do that as a team, we get together, we talk about the research, we talk about the recommendations, and I always invite the researcher along and allow them to see their research from start to finish so that for them it's not 
um, merely a piece of you know, a thesis or a dissertation that gets put on the shelf, that they see it as work. And so they actually get experience of research and practice, and that's what they get out of it too. And for us, we learn all these things about our programs, this building knowledge around what we do. Um, and recently, over two years, we've taken a, a slightly different step because, you know, you can't keep finding these these uh, students all the time. So what we did was I actually went to the, to the university um, and Kelsey, who I'd worked with on the project K-Way, but the PhD student was now a lecturer at the university and said to her, um, you know, when I was doing this research, I found out the peer mentors told us an awful lot about what they gained and I'm sure there's some something there and I'd like to find out more. Um, she was interested in peer mentoring research. There wasn't a lot out there, so we agreed to collaborate. And we collaborated this time throughout the project. It was really 50-50. We worked together making the grant application, designing the project, analyzing the data, reporting dissemination from, from a world ago. For two years, we worked together. And um, we got a whole wealth of knowledge for both of us and a whole lot of gains, as well as finding more about our program. They got to, apply, to see research and practice and learned a lot about the reality of collecting data from young people. We learned a lot of new research skills from them, so, um, so everybody really gained. This slide shows at the moment just five of the research projects, so we don't, unfortunately, we can't just work on one at a time. That would be really nice, but usually we've got about seven or eight projects on the go at the moment. They all vary. They, um, the one in the far corner there um, around the gaming, we were interested in gaming and why it engages young people so much. So we've actually got a young researcher at the moment out on the wilderness for her sins in the cold alongside the students. Um, and she's going to produce hopefully from that a tool on what can be, at what point these young people are really engaged in what we're doing and when we lose them, when they become de disengaged. And that's just one of several projects we've got going on. Must be near the end. <laughs> um, so basically, going back to those three points, um, this is over the sort of 12 years slowly where we've come to. So for me, it's been a really a real big learning process because I started with, you know, how am I going to do this? How am I going to um, fulfill this with very few resources? And now I feel like we have some really exciting research happening. Uh, for STARS, um, we've done all these things, sort of internal partnerships, student-led projects, collaborations, and what's really exciting that's come out of STARS is something that I've called, and I've only just put this name together, Collaborative Practice Learning, could change its name, but that basically what that means is some of our learnings, now the university said they have a whole wealth of students who are looking for practical uh, opportunities to, to practice, to um, gain their practical experience and serving learning experience, that's such an important part of the degree. We have a whole lot of program development that we've identified that we've like done. So we want to work together with these students and using their, um, their learning and more what they know about positive youth development and the theory of positive youth development to help us develop our programs and um, take, it, to take it one step further and learn from our research. Finally, I just pulled together a few lessons. I've learned that evaluating the program theory, so building a theory, a, a model, and students can help you on this piece of work as well as doing it internally. It's really as important as doing your outcomes. You can't just dive in and say, I have a program. I want to know what the outcomes. You really need to understand your program, understand what you're doing, understand the theory behind it. Get all that groundwork done uh, before you design your evaluation. It's not just the gold standard. You really have to sort of fit practicality in with what you're doing and, and get the best evidence and the best fit. Using our research <coughs> partnerships has been just absolute gold for us. It's helped us create a whole lot of new knowledge and insights for ourselves and for the university, so everybody's gained. Um, and it's given us the opportunity to link to a lot of org other organisations and youth organisations because they're keen on you know, our, our research findings as well, and we're keen to learn from them. Um, but mostly what's really exciting is this whole, like I say, commitment that our organization now has to inquiry, and we keep getting new questions, new bits of research um, to guide us in our next direction. And every piece of research is just as exciting as that first one 12 years ago. Okay, thank you.